Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you would be able to wrap up this time together, Lord, and that we would be able to share the word to encourage one another today and every day. As we end the year, we've been talking about faith for the past two weeks. Lord, thank you that our faith we can apply in our lives. It's not just a concept. It's a tool that you have given us to live successfully in life. For your word says, the just, those who are being made right by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, shall live by faith. It is our calling as believers to live by faith. So we thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Faith as defined by the Bible in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Uh, we'd like to take a look at it at the Amplified Classic. So if you can have that verse up, it would be great. Now I'm going to ask you to read. So when I stop speaking, that's when you continue reading. Amen? Come on, church. You have to help me out here. Amen? It says, now faith. Amen? Now faith is the? It is the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for being the? Of things we do not see and the of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to our senses. Amen? So we see here that their faith is described as the assurance. See? Pati yung aso nag-amen. It's def defined as the proof and it is defined as the conviction. So my title for my message today is Assurance, Proof, Conviction. Amen? And we're going to have these three points. Simple three-point message that you would take home and you would use in your life. Alright po? It begins by saying, now faith. How many of you know that faith is not for the future? Although at times the, thing we, the things we pray for do not happen immediately, it has to be that when you pray in faith, when you believe in faith, that you believe that it's already now. Amen? You see, where do we put our faith in? As Christians, we don't put our faith in our prayer life. We don't put our faith in ourselves. We don't put our faith in our good works. We don't put our faith in our obedience. Our faith is only placed on one thing and one thing alone. It is the grace of God. Now, what is the grace of God? The Bible says that when Jesus died on the cross, He said it very clearly, it is finished. So the grace of God is a finished work. So God's not going to do it all over again for you and for me. He's not going to go on the cross again for you and for me. When you ask, Lord, forgive me, take along. Akit muna ako sa cross ulit. No! It is a finished work. And the Bible says that He has given us all things pertaining to life and to godliness. His grace provides all things. Ephesians declares that He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Teka, teka, teka muna. Eh, pastor, ang daming dito sa Bible na hindi pa nangyayari sa buhay ko. Kristiyano ako, He has given us. Eh, bakit hindi pa na sa akin? Because you have to read the verse in its completeness. He has given us all things in the heavenly or in the spiritual realm. See, the grace of God, that finished work, is already completed in the spiritual realm. It is a spiritual bank that is full. So, Pastor, kung spiritual, paano kung matatanggap? You have to understand, before you receive in the physical, it has to be first done in the spiritual we are not, not mere natural beings. We are spiritual beings. So, paano mangyayari yan? That's where faith comes. Faith takes the finished work of grace and brings the truth into our reality. Did you hear me? Faith takes the finished work of grace and takes that truth and brings it to our reality. That's why you need to know what the grace of God has done, what is it that He has done in our life? Because that is the only thing that we can access through faith. If it's not a finished work, no matter how hard you pray, no matter how hard you believe, kahit pumuputok na yung veins mo sa leeg at noo, pag nagpa-pray, hindi mangyayari po yun. 
Because faith can only reach into what grace has already provided. Amen? And that's why it's now. Because grace already has provided for it. And we, what we need to do is take our faith, attach it to His grace, and bring that and pray. Our prayer, my prayer is that His truth will become reality in your life. Amen? Do you believe that? Would you like to see that in your life? But you see, our faith, our now faith, needs to have a foundation. So ano po yung foundation ng our faith? Hebrews 11.6 talks about this foundation. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he, come on church, that he, and that he is a, of those who diligently seek him. See, there are two things that we need to understand. The two foundations for our faith. Number one is who is God? Who is God? And I want to encourage you today, many times, our understanding of God is based on the circumstances that we are going through. Who God is to you, many times is determined but with what's going on in your life. Example, there's sickness and disease in your life. If you see God as the one who has given you that sickness and disease to give you, to teach you a lesson, then wag ka na magpray. Kasi bigay ni Lord yan. Tanggapin mo na po. Namnamin mo po yung sickness and disease niyo. Bastos ang pastor na to, ha? Eh, sinabi mo nagaling kay Lord, eh. Hindi naman ako nagsabi. Ikaw nagsabi nun, eh. Wala mo lang sinabi, eh. Eh, ba't ka nagagalit? Hindi naman ikaw yan, eh. Come on, are you listening? If you say that if you look at God as the giver of that sickness and disease, then you're gonna have a hard time trusting God. Because ay, nakakatakot pala tong God na to. Ang tindi magbigay ng leksyon. But if you see God as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals me. If you see our Lord Jesus as the one that before he died on the cross, he was whipped and scourged, and Isaiah says, by his stripes, you were already healed. If you see the life of Jesus, that it says, wherever he went, he healed all. Can I say all? He healed all who were sick and all who were oppressed from the devil. You know that Greek word all? You know what it means in English? It means all. Sa Tagalog, lahat. See, Christ came to heal, not to impute sickness and disease. That's why when you see Him as your healer, when you pray regarding sickness and disease, you know the finished work. You know the character of God. Amen? If, you, if you're going through a lack in your life and you see God as the one who gives and the one who takes away, wah, hindi ka obedient, so wala kang matatanggap ngayon. Be, buti nga. If you see God as a stingy, oppressive ruler who's with a tight fist, then you will never experience blessings in your life. But if you see God as a generous, loving, forgiving, faithful, Jehovah Jireh, the one who sees and provides, then our prayer life, our faith life will be different. It all begins with how do you see Him? Who is God to you? How, don't allow, it's so good, don't allow your circumstance to change the way you see God. Many times, we see God through a borrowed lens. What do you mean? How many of you here do not use eyeglasses? You do not use eyeglasses. Can I see your hands? Now, if you would borrow somebody who has 500, 500 grade, or 500, 1,500, and you put those glasses on, do you think you will still see clearly? No. See, the glasses, the borrowed glass makes your view blurred. So stop looking at God through other people's experience and opinions of God. 
God has given you a 2020 vision of Him through the Holy Spirit. Stop using somebody else's perception to distort the way you see God. Amen? It's time to throw away those borrowed glasses. Do you hear me, church? Don't let the borrowed glass of circumstance warp the way you see God. Let the truth the truth of God's word give you clarity and 2020 vision of who he is. Amen. And secondly, once you know him, you got to know his promises. And when you know his promises, guess what? He is a rewarder. You believe in him, you believe in his promises. These two things are the foundation of your faith. Who is God and what has he promised? And his promise is already done by the grace of God. Amen. So now that we know this, now that we have this now faith, we have the right foundation, then now faith can become an assurance. Now what does it mean for faith to become an assurance? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 to 23 declares this, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God. Stop. Ano to? What's going on here? See, this is an Old Testament way of coming to God. This is an Old Testament way of coming to prayer. The high priest would offer a sacrifice. He would kill the lamb on the first day without spot or blemish. And he would hope and pray that the, the, the blood of that lamb as he enters into the holiest where the presence of God is, is sufficient. For if it is not sufficient, the sins of, the, the sins of Israel will not be forgiven. And even the high priest himself will die under judgment. And you see, Christ did not, under the new covenant, Christ did not come to do away with that. As we can clearly see here, Christ came to fulfill it. He is our sacrifice. He is our high priest. He is the, his blood was shed. Therefore, we can come boldly. Amen. Knowing with full assurance, knowing with confidence, knowing that Jesus made a way for you and for me. And so it is with his promises in your life. He made the way. You didn't make the way. He made the way. So we continue by saying, let us draw near with a true heart and full, what? Full assurance of, see, faith needs an assurance. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with the pure water, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without for he who promised is. See, what does a person who is assured do? It, it, assurance of faith changes your declaration. You know, Pastor Amara shared this last week. When you know his promise, when you know him, when you know what's already been provided, you need to begin to declare it. You see, your declaration is not the magic key to unlock your answered prayer. Listen, your declaration reveals what's in your heart. Your declaration reveals what you truly believe in. And it says here that your declaration should be without wavering. Anong ibig sabihin yan? Kasi many of us, we have a church declaration eh. Ano yung church declaration, Pastor? You know when you come to church, bad trip na bad trip ka, you are really had a bad week, talagang nag-away pa kayo ng asawa nyo at mga anak nyo, you're coming into church and as soon as nakita mo yung welcome team, Ochuk! Sis, brad, hello! Kumusta ka na, sis? Blessed. Jesus is good. Grabe talaga si Lord. Napaka-faithful. You have that church declaration. You come into church, you know the right words, you quote the right verses. Talagang, wow, sarap ng church na to. Ah. Sarap ng feeling. Talaga, para maglabas mo, chik! Grabe itong Pilipinas. Ano? Grabe naman itong pastor na ito. Ako na naman tinatamaan niya. Now, how many of you know it's good to be in an atmosphere of faith? And here's our prayer. That hopefully, when you come to church and your faith is begins to arise and gets encouraged, that your declaration will last until Monday. 
And then maybe the next week, aabot na siya ng Tuesday. And hopefully the following week, Thursday na. Diba? Malay mo, after one month of being in the presence of God, aabot na siya ng Friday. Pero hanggang Friday lang, Pastor, kasi Sabado, kasama ko na asawa ko at anak ko, nako, wala na. It gets real. The struggle is real, Pastor. We pray, our prayer is that, that your declaration, because your declaration is not the magic key. It just shows what's really inside your heart. Amen? So faith The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let your declaration be assured by your faith. Talks about the proof. Now, what is the proof? You know, I don't know how many of you like like watching courtroom dramas or how many of you like watching, you know, mga spy movies or yung mga... Mga thrillers, yung mga solving mysteries, you know, who is the killer, who is the one who did it, who is the one who kidnapped the girl, uh, sino yung hide, you know, all these things that you're trying to figure out. And every time you give an assumption, you say, this is the person, this is, anong hinihingi nila? Where is the proof? See, when truth is declared, truth needs proof. Did you hear me? Many times, ito yung katotohanan. Sige nga, patunayan mo. Where is the proof so I know it's the truth? So I want to let you know about faith being the proof. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14 says this. It is in Christ. Anybody in Christ here? That you, that me, that all of us, once we heard the truth and believed it. See, what do you do with the truth? You believe it. This message of your salvation found yourself home free, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. This signet, this sign, the word signet means sign, from God hmm, is the first installment of what's coming. It is a reminder that we'll get everything that God has planned for us, a praising glorious life. You know, many times when I saw it, I used to read this, I used to think the sign was the Holy Spirit. But then I realized the Holy Spirit was not the signet. The Holy Spirit was not the one which was the sign because we have the Holy Spirit in us. What was it talking about here? It was talking about our salvation. Do you believe that you are saved? Who believes that they are saved? How did you get saved? How did you get saved? Did you do something? K- kinda. You had to use your faith. Right? Because salvation is not automatic. Yes, Jesus died for everyone, but you have to believe and receive in order to be saved. Amen? If you don't agree with me, then we can talk after the church. And let me explain to you in Scripture after Scripture, one witness after the other, that yes, It is a finished work. Yes, the grace of God is greater. But like any gift, it needs to be received. And faith. So anybody here saved? Through the grace of God? And now you are sure that you're saved? See, that's the first part lang. There is more. Your salvation is just the beginning of what God has planned for your life. And that's why you need to understand the same way you began this journey will be the same way you continue. Believing in God's finished work and receiving it on a daily basis so that you may experience this glorious life that Christ has for you. Amen? The proof, you know what's the proof that God will answer your prayers? You're saved. The greatest miracle anyone can receive is salvation. Harder than curing cancer. Hard. You know, changing, a, becoming a new creation. That's not easy. That's why don't tell me, it's not easy. Jesus died for that. Amen. Greatest price paid for your salvation. That's why if you need proof that God will answer your prayers, did He save you? There's your proof. And I like the, prom- I like the installment part. 
Kasi alam mo, may parating eh. Ayoko nung installment nung nagbabayad ka. Kasi alam mo, may parating na bayad. Si Judith nandyan na. Saan Judith? Judith. You know, every month may Judith. Right? But I like it if it's the other way around. If you're receiving, hindi ka nagbabayad. If you're receiving, proof. God has already proven that He is faithful. Amen? Finally, conviction. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng conviction? It is a confidence in your belief. See, when you are to operate in faith, you need to operate in confidence. When you pray to God, you don't pray to God, Lord, sige na nga. Sige na, Lord. Lord, please naman. Please, 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 Jesus, Jesus, sige na. Parang awa mo na, Lord. Lord, okay lang ba na mahil mo ako, Lord? No confidence in that. Now listen, confidence is not yabang. See, yabang is pride, and God does not like pride. Confidence is your assurance, not in yourself. Yet it causes you to be assured in yourself. Confidence, true confidence is insurance, is in having confidence in the one who would make it happen in your life. This is, this is confidence. 1 John 5, 14 to 15. Now, this is the confidence that we have. Come on, church. This is the confidence that we have. So where is our confidence placed? Who is him? See, the confidence is not in yourself. It's in him. That if we ask anything. Now, listen. Many times people say, Lord, sinabi mo lang, ask eh. Mangyayari yan. It's by faith. I ask by faith. Brad, sis, basahin mo nga. Ay, sorry. Kulang yung faith ko. Pastor, ask anything. Mm. Anything I ask God, gagawin niya. Anything. Brad, kaya ka na, kaya ka na didisappoint eh. Hindi mo naman binasa ng buo eh. God didn't say whatever you ask, He will answer. Your faith doesn't assure God. No, your faith does not is not your assurance. If you ask anything according to His will. See, that's where people get it off. Lord, gusto ko ng asawa ng kapitbahay ko. Akin na Lord. You think God will answer? I have faith. I'm a man of faith. Sasagutin ako ni Lord. Ito sagot niya, five-fold ministry. Pak! Sa pool. Lay your hands. Sana hindi ma-recover. Amen? You need to know what the will of God is. Our faith is in His will. His will is in His word. His word is His promise. And His promise is already given through the grace of God. In knowing the will of God, you can begin to pray properly. Amen? Next verse goes on to say, And if we know that He hears us, Whatever we ask according to His will, we know that we have the prayers that we have asked of Him. Amen? Our confidence is in His finished work. Our confidence is in Him and His will, not in ourselves. It's in Him. Amen? Our conviction is in Christ. So just to summarize Hebrews 11, chapter 1, in Christ's word. You see, we're reading Paul. Now let's hear Jesus when he taught his disciples how to pray. In Mark 11, he's teaching his disciples how to pray. And we see a pattern of how Paul explains what faith is. So Jesus answered and said to his disciples, Come on, guys. See, where is faith on? Is it in your prayers? Is it in yourself? It's praise in your faith in who God is and what He has done. His promises. Amen. Have faith in God. Next. 
For assuredly, an assurance. Faith is an assurance. I say to you, whoever see your assurance causes you to change your confession. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast to the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Proof. When you have whatever you say, is that proof? Amen. Come on, amen. We have an assurance. We have proof. And finally, verse 24. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe, have conviction, have confidence, believe that you have already received them and you will have them. Jesus spoke the same of faith. Our faith is in God. In this faith, we have assurance. We will see the proof of our answered prayer and then we will be confident. Our believing will begin to grow and we will begin to see more and more and more in our life. See, this is not just for the year and see. This is for every day. What I've taught you today, maybe you've heard these verses many, many times before. But it's a simple reminder, three simple points. That your life is a life of faith. And that God has already provided to Jesus' finished work the grace that is needed for us to live, to rule, to reign, to enjoy life. We need to tap into Him. We need to tap into His promise. We need to be assured of those promises. And He is faithful to prove that He will do what He said. And the more He proves, the more confidence, the more conviction that we have. Our salvation is the proof that lets us know that He's not done with you yet. Tell the person beside you, God's not done with us. There's so much more. Amen. Do you receive something today? Amen. Come on, let's give praise to God.